going to welcome everybody tonight. Um, I am joined by Denise Deitchman, um, who is very, I'm just really happy that she's here with me tonight. I feel like she is my um, co-host extraordinaire. For those of you that, that don't um, already know me, my name is Christine Short. I am the parent of a 19 year old son who stutters. I also have a 17 year old daughter. Um, also joining us tonight are three of our Teen Advisory Council um, young women. I'm going to let everyone introduce themselves. Um, Denise, I'm going to turn it over to you and then we'll have our guests, our panelists, I should say, introduce themselves and then I'll just go over a few housekeeping things. Okay, sure. Well, it's it's good to see so many people have joined us tonight. Um, as Christine said, my name is Denise. My daughter Jolie is 13 years old and we have been part of the NSA since she was uh, eight years old and finding the NSA for us was a complete blessing. Um, she definitely felt all alone, not knowing anyone else who stuttered. And as her mom, I certainly felt, you know, hanging out on the end of the world alone, not, not even realizing that I needed the support that I did. So we just have gotten really active and really involved. Um, this is a very exciting topic for me. Um, when I told my daughter that I was gonna be part of this tonight, she, she said, well, can you ask them this? And can you make sure to ask them this? So I have like a laundry list of things that she wants to know from you know a teenager's perspective. So it's, it's good to see you all. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Denise. Ashley, do you wanna take a minute and introduce yourself? Sure. Um, my name is Ash, Ash, Ashley Gibbons. Um, I just turned 20 years old. Um, I am a sophomore at the College for Creative Studies in Detroit, Michigan. Um, and yeah, I think that's about it. <laughs> Thank you for joining us tonight, Ashley. Clara? I'm Clara Kilburn. I am 18 and a first year at Pomona College. I'm currently living in, at home in Grand Rapids, Michigan. So fellow Michigander. And I, I'm majoring in Chinese. Wow. Well, we will have some um, questions on speaking a foreign language. I actually added that one today because I always hear about that. Um, Gabby? Hi, um, my name is Gabby. Um, I'm a second year at the University of Chicago. Um, I'm majoring in Latin American and Iberian languages and global studies, and I'm so excited to be here today. So thank you. Well, parents, I think you can tell we have some pretty remarkable um, young women here with us tonight. And you know, the title of this is Parents Understanding Your, Your Children Who Stutter. And so um, personally, for me, what has been helpful in understanding, you know, my own child who stutter is meeting um, people who stutter, you know, besides just him. And that would be meeting other kids his age, meeting people that are older than him that stutter, um, listening to their stories. Everybody's story is different. Um, what I told the girls tonight is that, you know, there's no wrong answers here. We're really interested in hearing their stories. Um, and I understand that the parents um, in our chat tonight probably do have a lot of questions. Feel free, any questions that you may have to put in the chat and Denise and I will facilitate getting that over to um, them to share their experiences and you know their advice for us. I do have some questions that we've already received in advance through Facebook, which was really nice. Um, so we can get that started that way. Um, I think that for a lot of parents, you know, there is there is always this concern, especially when you're growing. Say, if you guys can think back to your elementary school, middle school years, you know, in terms of advocate, advocate, advocating for yourself, you know, when do when does the parent step back? When does the parent do it on your behalf? And so I I do hear parents ask the question often, you know, am I doing too much or am I not doing enough? And how do I know? So can you guys maybe share your own personal experience, maybe of 
at what age or at what times it was great that your parents stepped in to help you or maybe um, facilitate you, you know, advocating for yourself. And then when you felt comfortable doing it on your own. Gabby, do you have any, anything? Uh, sure. Um, so when I was in elementary school, I was very lucky because I have a twin um, who also has a stutter, although hers is very different from mine. Um, mine is um, a bit more, it's a bit more present than hers. But when I was in elementary school, I was um, not super aware of my own stutter just because um, my twin who I spent all my time with also had a stutter. So I just sort of thought it was how you, you spoke. Um, but when I was in my, um, my, in fourth grade, one of my teachers um, imitated me in a very mocking sort of not a nice way. And my mom really stepped in and talked to the school and talked to the teacher. Um, and that was really um, that was really helpful for me because I I did experience some mocking from other children and so her stepping in with the teacher really communicated to me that that was like not okay behavior and um, yeah I I can't really think of any other time that she really stepped in when I was in elementary school I think my mom really thought that the best like approach was to sort of just let me like live and not be too conscious about my stutter um but that 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 was an important experience yeah thank you I you know I think it's interesting when you say that you had a twin and you just thought that's how we talked um I think that's an experience probably that a, you know, a lot of kids can kind of relate to in a small way that, well, this is just how I talk, but to have the twin with you, I mean, that was probably um, a comforting way, you know, to grow up, or at least you had someone always, you know, in the next room to talk to about it. Yeah, exactly. And even now we're able to talk about our stutter in just like a way where we completely understand each other. We understand what it's like. Um, because we've, you know, we know the experiences that we've had. So that's been really good. Yeah. Yeah. You have your own mini NSA in your house. <laughs> that's helpful. Um, Clara, do you remember um, a time, you know, maybe when you had to start advocating for yourself or how you kind of facilitated that with your parents? Uh, I actually have a similar experience to Gabby. So I was pretty, that was pretty cool. Interesting to hear about. I also had a um, negative experience in fourth grade where my mom stepped in. Um, and it, I would say beyond elementary school, my parents didn't directly get involved, but I would often, um, for example, I had a negative comment from one of my friends who didn't know I stuttered. And so when I did stutter, they kind of indirectly weren't directly mocking it, but they kind of said a small comment about it. And I had to suddenly defend myself and advocate for my stutter. And that felt kind of icky afterwards. And I really, you know, debriefed with my mom and really kind of process my feelings with. And so that was really my mom's role in my life with stuttering as someone who I could just talk to. And if I had a bad day to just kind of rant about it and I didn't, you know, she, I think she probably just say, is there anything I can do? Or she would maybe potentially give me advice, but it was a very, you know, I came to her and she just allowed me to have a space where I could just just kind of express my feelings without worrying that she was gonna, I don't know, embarrass me or like do anything, but she just was kind of a way to sort of say, okay. But then when I was little and I couldn't express that as much, that was when she did step in very frequently. So I think it's the balance between when you're younger, really stepping in, um, but then as you're getting older, allow yourself to be in that active uh, passive role, which was really helpful for me. That makes sense. I think that's a probably a good natural progression. Ashley? Um, I was going to say my experience with my mom was very different. Um, my mom is very much just like a active person, I guess. Um, so for example, um, in the second grade, one of my teachers, we had to go up and like say our s s spelling words and stuff like that. And um, my teacher thought I forgot my my spelling words because I was he hesitating as I was saying them, and um, I didn't know that she like didn't grade me for it. And so 
I guess my, my, my mom saw the bad grade and she like had a meeting with my teacher and um, she was like, she didn't know anything that, um, that well, that's what my te teacher was saying that she didn't know like what she was talking about. And um, I'm not really sure what my mom said to her, but the teacher came out crying <laughs> after that. That's all I remember. <laughs> so um, yeah, my mom takes a very like active approach. Um, but some, I guess it has been like helpful, helpful for me because I'm like, no mom, like I don't want you to do this anymore. Like I can do it. So yeah, I guess that's been kind of helpful for me. So now that you're older, you can have a conversation with her and tell her, no, I've got it. Yeah, exactly. Great. Well, I think um, it's good to know. Wait, Claire, did you have something to add? I was just gonna add a quick comment because Ashley um, brought up an interesting point that I forgot to mention. Um, sometimes when there was actually like, when there would be like speeches or presentations and sometimes they would actually like grade, like, you know, did you like repeat yourself or st uh, like basically stutter? They didn't basically say that. And so sometimes when I didn't notice that that would be unfair to me or that would be an injustice, she would sometimes point that out. So similar to what, you know, Ashley is pointing out that, you know, that kind of experience of when you experience discrimination or you're about to experience discrimination, sometimes that watchful eye pointing it out and saying that that's not going to be okay or that's not okay is also really helpful. So I thought that was a really, yeah, really good point. I want to just add something. As a mom of a middle schooler, I, I probably take the similar approach to sounds like how Ashley's mom has handled things. Um, you know, in elementary school, it's kind of a bulldog, but a very nice bulldog because I just wanted to make sure that my daughter's needs were being met, that any teacher or any person at that school that came in contact with her knew what was going on. Um, I wasn't quite allowed to have that same approach with middle school. So that's kind of where we switched. And she would email each of her teachers at the beginning of sixth grade, beginning of seventh grade, talking about her stutter. She does have a 504 with accommodations, but kind of giving all the information together coming from her. My question kind of along those lines for the group is, did you ever, because in elementary school, the teacher would tell the class because that's what Jolie wanted. In middle school, she was like, hard pass, absolutely not. Cause you know, all the new kids coming together. Did you ever do that in the beginning of the school year or just people would figure it out that you had a stutter or did you tell them as it came up in conversation, if you were a lab partner or something, like how did that, how did that work for you guys? If you can remember back to middle school specifically, cause the, you know, it's still like a weird emotional couple years. Clara, you're nodding your head. What do you think? Um, in middle school, I did not tell my friends that I stuttered. I think part of that was the, um, I happened to go to a school that was very diverse in many ways. So I felt like everyone's individual differences and quirks were more accepted. Um, but then in high school, that environment changed. And so the actual story was from my high school friends who didn't know I stuttered and inadvertently made fun of my stutter, not knowing that that was something that was part of me. Um, and so I would recommend, I would say over as a general thing to advocate your stutter, but I think especially for middle school students, that's kind of taboo. Um, so I definitely think it's a uh, feel, uh, kind of feel, feel it out situation. Okay, that's fair. Do you guys feel it's helpful um, for your teachers to know, or your professors at, at this age to know that you stutter prior to the semester or a new school year starting? Yes, everyone's saying yes. How do you, how do you, okay, so walk us through, how do you let them know? So your parents aren't the ones telling them anymore. Do you email them? Do you, tell me what you guys do. Gabby? Um, yeah, I know for me, um, even in high school, um, to be honest, like my parents didn't really advocate for me in terms of my stutter. Um, so I think that was something that I really um, start, like start, started to communicate on my own. Um, so now in college, um, depending on like the, the sort of class that I have, like if it's a small discussion class or if it's a large lecture, if it's a class that I think I'll be talking in or participating in, mm -hmm. I will most likely send an email at the beginning of the semester or the quarter where I'm just, you know, I just say I have a stutter, like a stutter is this. Um, and I would just appreciate like if you didn't finish my sentences and 
Um, like I will probably stutter more at the beginning of the school year because I'm, you know, like becoming comfortable. Um, and, or sometimes I'll go to office hours and I'll just like, you know, be very professional, but also just sort of communicate that to the, the teacher. Um, and I think that's been really helpful for me because like, I mean, I've not really had many negative experiences um, in terms of professors. I mean, maybe they haven't been like, you know, super like open about it, but they've been like, okay, like, thank you for letting me know. So I, that has been really helpful for me because it's taken the pressure off. So mm -hmm. if I'm talking in class, I know that they're not like grading me on participation in an you know, incredibly harsh way that they're taking into account the fact that sometimes it's difficult to jump in, like when there's discussions over Zoom. And so, yeah, that, that's been really helpful. Um, like I, I, I'm now I totally believe that being upfront in advertising is like the way to go. Yeah. Okay. I see um, in the chat, um, someone sharing their experience that most teachers aren't trained in any way to know how to accommodate students who stutter. And rather than, you know, seeking to maybe reprimand them, it's more helpful to educate them on how to, mm -hmm. how to help you. And 100% agree. And I think that once you know that and you start doing that, you see a huge shift. Um, and so just like Gabby was talking about when, you know, when you get to college, you may be in a class with 400 people and the teacher doesn't know anybody's name and nobody talks to the teacher. Is it going to matter if that teacher knows? Probably not if you're just turning in essays. Um, but in a, in high school, yes. In middle school, yes. In grade school, yes. In a lecture class or like a recitation class or a small group, 100% yes. Um, so I'm glad that they, they, they chimed in with that. And, and I think it makes it easier. Um, it takes the pressure off, you know, you don't have to worry about, oh my gosh, are they going to notice that I'm stuttering because, You've already told them it's, it's no big, it's no big secret. Um, we do have a question in the chat from an SLP who joined us tonight, who's also a person who stutters. So she would like to hear from um, you guys what your experience has been in terms of positive speech therapy. You know what's helped you the most. Um, and it doesn't, I don't think she's looking for like one trick, but it may be something, what has helped you maybe the most um, in terms of if you've learned something from a speech therapist or just maybe in terms of how you feel about your stutter. Clara, are you nodding? Um, I'll just say real quick, I haven't really had speech therapy, but um, my dad would sometimes um, tell me that like, he had speech therapy, he stutters and he had, have had speech therapy. Sometimes he would tell me to take a deep breath and other kinds of things. And that really, I did not appreciate. Often at times I get really frustrated. This is often when I was younger. And so I think um, for me personally, what has helped me the most is the kind of acceptance of a stutter. And I think that actually, once you get that acceptance, your, your stutter kind of goes away a little bit. And I think that once you get, just because you get comfortable. And I think um, what I always, what really helped me and accepted my stutter was the kind of idea that there are so many qualities about me. And if I'm a, you know, friendly, enthusiastic, energetic person, which is the kind of person I am, they're going to notice that more than any kind of speech impairment. And so I think that for me, that realizing was probably the best speech therapy, indirect speech therapy that I personally had, because that was what was help, helped me kind of learn to live with my stutter. And it was for me, it was the personal comments that I got from my parents that were specifically about, you know, how to specifically like, nip, you know, nip your, nip your speech in the bud. That was, that was actually the opposite for me, but that's just my personal experience. Mm -hmm. Ashley, do you have, did you have speech therapy? Yes, um, I've gone to speech therapy on and off since like kindergarten. Um, most, the last, um, I stopped going to speech therapy in my senior year of high school, so like two years ago. Um, and I had a lot of like speech therapists that I haven't liked, like at all. 
um, I guess what they did is like, I, I think I was in, in middle school and I just like didn't want to stutter anymore. I was like over it. And I, and I told, told my mom I wanted to go to speech, speech therapy again. And um, we found the speech therapist and he like the very first day, he was just like, you need to tell everyone that you stutter. Like everybody needs to know. Like every single person you meet, the first thing you have to tell them is that you stutter. And he just talked about that the whole time. And I was like, oh my God, I can't do this. I, I'm not, I am not cut out for this. So I stopped going and, but I feel like the most, my most recent speech therapist in high school was the most helpful. Um, even though I was learning techniques and on um, easy onsets, stuff like that. She was, she was always telling me that it was okay that if I, that if I did stutter while trying to use my techniques, because my first thought would just be, if I stuttered while trying to use my techniques or that I wasn't using, using them, that it was like bad. But she was saying that it was okay that if sometimes I forgot to use a tech technique, which kind of helped me get to the stage of acceptance. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that was the most helpful for me personally. Well, I, I think it can be a lot of pressure, I, you know, to, to always use your techniques. I mean, that's, yeah. that's what my son has said that sometimes he doesn't want to. And there's that line, you know, do you feel bad? Especially when, you know, you're a child and you're trying to please the speech therapist and you want to do what they say. So it sounds like you had that perfect combination. Here are the tools to use when, when you do and when you don't, that's okay too. So thank you for sharing that. I think that's important to remember. Um, Gabby, did you ever have speech therapy? Um, yeah, so I did have a lot of speech therapy when I was younger, but it wasn't the most positive, I think. But when I was in high school, similarly to Ashley, I think I was um, very um, like just upset about my stutter and I really like reached a breaking point, I think. And so that really um, forced me or just, I saw speech therapy as like a solution and I didn't understand that my stutter would like not go away. Um, but my speech therapy in high school is very positive. Um, my therapist, was the one who recommended me to the NSA and to go to all the conferences. Um, she also like recognized that I was more of like a covert stutterer and that I had like many moments of fluency and that most of my stutter came from being anxious about stuttering and um, you know, like being in my head and stuff. So something that we really focused on was like positive thinking and like changing my, like and like changing my own, um, you know, like my own, I guess, like view of my stutter and calling pizza places and uh, pizza places and like fake stuttering and stuff. So um, she, that was a really positive experience for me because she really focused more on like the emotional aspect of stuttering, which was something that I think um, was like what I needed to work on. Yeah. For those um, in the room who may not know, can you tell us what a covert someone who is a covert stutter. What does that mean? Um, I think it's, I'm not completely sure, but I think it's someone who stutters, who uses like avoidance techniques and switches words all the time. And mm. also uses a lot of like filler words like um, um, before they're about to stutter or block and just does everything possible to not, like to not appear like they're gonna stutter. And so for a covert stutter, one of like the first, ways of um you know changing that is to like let yourself stutter and to like let there be bounces on words because then it sort of removes the stigma of stuttering so then it's um so then you actually stutter less um yeah well you just explained it so thank you thank you I think that um for parents you know especially with with young children they've they haven't heard of the concept of covert stuttering. So sometimes they may mistake 
periods of what they're perceiving to be these long periods of fluency, but maybe the, the child is hiding their stutter. Um, so I think that's always important to, to look out for. Um, I do have a question um, and it's about the president. Obviously President Biden is a person who stutters and during his campaign, he, I'm sure you guys have all seen um, his presentation with Braden Harrington, who's 13. Would you guys like to see him become a more active member in the stuttering community? And if so, maybe in, in what way, what would you like to see? Have you guys thought about that? Gabby? Um, yeah, that's, I read a lot of the articles at the beginning. Um, I think there was like one by the keynote speaker, I forget his name, um, I'm completely blanking. But yeah, something that I noticed um, that sort of like, a, not upset me, but like just sort of saddened me was that Biden always talked about, President Biden always talked about his stutter in terms of like overcoming okay. it and like outgrowing it. And if you, if like when, when, when I watch a speech of President Biden, I can tell that he's switching words and that um, he's like about to stutter and stuff. So, I mean, clearly he hasn't like overcome his stutter. Like he's overcome it maybe in terms of like his thinking, but not like in terms of technically like never stuttering again. So for me, it just sort of saddens me that even as like someone who's elected by the public, he can't like outwardly be a person who stutters. He has to be a person who conquered his stutter, like technically. Um, so that's something that I've always thought about just because I think as someone who like stutters and continues to stutter, um, it would be better to know that someone was elected who still like was conscious that they, that they stutter. Agreed. Agreed. Um, Clara, do you guys have anything that you'd like to see him? do maybe to um, become more active in the stuttering community or? I was gonna say, um, I would like, to, I he's already done some like small social media like posts about stuttering and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but I personally would like to see more just because to get it out to people that are like my age that aren't watching, you know, the the news or whatever. Um, yeah, just to like, I don't know. I still kind of have friends that are like, oh, a, um, just when the president can't can't stutter, I'm un uncomfortable with with that. So I personally would just like to see more like. Ad advocacy online um yeah yeah mm -hmm. he did post something i know on international stuttering awareness day in october which i thought was wonderful um i've read articles about him over time and you know it has been said that even though yes he has risen to the highest power of office of our nation that regardless, it's still viewed by so many people as a weakness and along his entire career, wherever they decided that he overcame it, I think people's perception of him got greater. It was a more positive because he overcame something, not to mention all the other, you know, challenges, lost his wife and his son and all that, but um, it would be interesting to, to hear more from him moving forward. I know that he was um, the keynote speaker at the um, American Institute for Stuttering Gala several years ago and has done some advocacy work with them over the years, you know, years ago. But I agree, I would, that was, that was always my biggest thing. Like you didn't overcome it because there's thousands of us watching you and we know how often that you just stuttered or switched a word or paused or hesitated or whatever. So, uh, you know, may, maybe this is just the beginning of a bigger platform that he can help offer us. But yeah, I would love to see more of it too. He has bigger worries right now. <laughs> I, I do think, um, you know, there would be some comfort, of, you know, when hopefully he says, 
yeah, I am still a person who stutters. Right. So what? Um, move on to the next question. Yeah. Um, you know, that I am looking forward to that day that, um, you know, disfluent speech, fluent speech, it's speech. It's, it's different, but it's still speech. I would like to just hear what the person says and not worry about, um, you know, them being critiqued in a negative way um, because they may stutter. So yeah, I'd like for him to own it and, and, and say, yeah, I stuttered on that. I didn't forget what I was going to say. Mm. I stuttered on the word. Um, I mean, he's gone, he's had a, a, more than a few stories about that. I think that's a good question. Um, yeah, I, I will say that he was a keynote speaker for the NSA several years ago. Um, I saw an old video um, and he, he was charismatic, you know, as, as, as he is. Um, so I think, you know, he has one foot in the stuttering community because it is who he is. Um, and he's been, been put in a situation where he probably felt like for several years that he had to hide his own stutter. Mm -hmm. um, and Denise, I think you make a good point. I mean, everybody loves the story of someone who overcame something. And yes, he has a life full of um, right. things that he did overcome. Um, and But yeah, I think that they probably spun that out politically. Moving on from that, um, our friend Bev would like to know, um, for the ladies, what would you guys say gave you the most confidence when you were in school? Having friends around you, you know, advertising or being open in the fact that you stuttered, going to support groups. Um, and she is commenting that you guys are also wonderfully confident, which I agree. Um, so what do you guys think? Clara? I love this question. Um, I. I think for me, I had a turning point in middle school because I had other things in my life got better. I had a lot of bullying in elementary school. I really enjoyed my middle school a lot more. So other things beyond stuttering had really changed in my, in my life. And that allowed me to kind of reevaluate who I was as a person, um, what, like, I guess, yeah. And so for me, what I kind of, I guess I'll first, explain this in a different way. Um, so for example, like if I hear someone like my friend talking, who's not a stutter, talk about how nervous thing it is to give a presentation in front of other people or any kind of, any kind of public speaking, I think to myself, well, yeah, it's scary, but the, the fear of stuttering in front of others is like so much greater. And I think for me, I, what gave me confidence was realizing that I live with these really unique really daunting fears and instead of that holding me down that gives me a strength to say well that's like it's hard to explain but basically for me I kind of realized that um the fear of for example being uh being a public speaker being outgoing um is a lot less than the fear of stuttering and if that the stuttering can be a superpower and making everything else seem a lot easier in comparison and so for me I actually became a lot more friendly a lot more outgoing which was my true self I was very quiet in, in a bunch of school for various other reasons, but stuttering helped me become who I am because I considered it a superpower and I allowed it to sort of put things in perspective and got to sort of, I'm, I, I don't phrase it very well, but it's something that I'm really, um, really happy that stuttering was able to give me. I think you phrased that very well. And I am sitting here honestly in awe of you because I have a 13 year old and I wish that she was able to hear that because I don't think that she views it in that way. She's a pretty happy kid, you know, has friends and all that, but to hear, to hear the confidence that you speak of now, it's, I think you said you're 20, you have more confidence at your age than adults who are my age who don't stutter and don't have, haven't nearly been through any of the things that maybe have come up, you know, in your lifetime. So all, all three of you, my goodness, I have so much hope for the next generation of people because you guys have all, you know, you, you haven't let what you've had to deal with and having, being a person who stutters, you haven't let it hold you back. And as a mom, it's just, it, it gives me such, such pride to, to know that my daughter will, you know, one day be in your shoes and, you know, has such strong female role models who happen to be women who stutter. Yeah. Amazing. Sorry. I had to interject because I was so moved by what you said. It's amazing.
when did you guys um, find the NSA? So Bev brought up support groups. Um, Gabby, you were fortunate enough to have a sister who stuttered and Clara, your father, you said stutters. Um, I think that that is, and correct me if I'm wrong, probably a level of comfort to, to know another person who stutters your whole life. Ashley, did you have anybody that you knew that stuttered when you were like in grade school? No, no, yeah. When, when was the first time that you met another person that stuttered? Um, I want to say when I was 10 or 12, mm -hmm. um, one of my friend's friends um, stuttered and um, he like came over to her house while I was there and I was, I was like listening to him talking and I was like, wait a minute. I was like, wait. And so I like asked him, I was like, do you stutter? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, so do I. And I was, he was like, I was like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. But yeah, it was like really just like, whoa. Like, obviously, you know that there are other people who stutter, but like, you're like, like, they're just like off in some far, like, world that like, I'll never get to, like, no one understands me. Um, but yeah, that was just really just like, really crazy for me. But like, um, the next people I met was when I went to the NSA conference um, two years ago, so. Yeah. And then you met like 800. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> was that overwhelming? Um, oh, kind of. I was like, I, I like always forgot, like, I was like, oh, I'm gonna, it's always a thought in the back of my head when I have to go up and like talk, like, oh my gosh, what if, if, if I stuttered, then everyone's gonna like laugh at me. And I'm like, oh, wait, I'm at an NSA, like everyone here stutters, it's fine. <laughs> So that was just like a weird thing for me, I guess. You guys all participate um, in the Teen Advisory Council. Um, and so I'm sure on, over the last year, you've had some level of online school like everybody else. And um, you're doing teen talks with teenagers over Zoom um, periodically. How do you guys, what are your thoughts on Zoom and stuttering? Is it better? Is it worse? Um, what are your thoughts on that? Ashley, how do you like it? Um, for me personally, I stutter more um, on Zoom. And for me, it's kind of annoying because like, I don't, I, I don't stutter when I'm by, by, by myself, like most people, but then it's like, there's a screen in front of me that has people on it. And all of a sudden I stutter and it's just like, this, this, this is, this is annoying, but um, it doesn't happen all the time, I guess. Um, sometimes on FaceTime with like one person, it'll still happen. And I guess that's just like the one annoying thing for me. And um, a lot of my teachers, like in, in terms of school, haven't like heard me stutter before. So they don't know what it like sounds like. And they sometimes um, they can't see it. Like, yeah, they just hear my, like my voice and yeah, it's just kind of weird, but yeah. It's different. Clara, Gabby, do you guys have any, do you have a love-hate relationship with Zoom? No big deal. Um, for me, at first, Zoom was very difficult, and I think, like, pre-pandemic, um, it definitely, like, phone interviews, if I had to do, like, Skype interviews, like, that was um, definitely, like, a source of anxiety, because I think for me, at least, like, even though I stuttered, something that I was conscious of was that I would try to, like, smile a lot or be, like, very, I don't know, like, enthusiastic or something, so that they would feel my presence that way but that's obviously different like you can't communicate that as well over like the phone or over zoom 
But now that we've been um, like attending Zoom classes for so long and everything in my life now is like virtual, um, I've become like more comfortable over Zoom. Like I stutter so much less than in person. And I notice that when I like go and interact with like new people or I had like an in-person class that was um, last quarter. Um, so now when I interact, and especially when I have to wear a mask, it's like way more difficult for me to um, interact because I know they can't see that I'm trying to talk. So I block a lot. Um, and I almost like prefer to be at home where I can like unmute myself and say like one thing or, or laugh. And yeah, so I think it's a love hate relationship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you made a good point about the masks. And we've heard we've heard that a lot. And actually, I think I, I think both of you guys, you know, everyone is learning Zoom. And then, you know, you add that in and it's a different way of communicating. And the teachers sometimes don't know what, you know, they're not as comfortable with it either. And everyone's trying to talk at once. And yeah. it's it can be a hot mess. Let's see here. Have any of you guys participated in any of the summer camps that they have for um, youths who stutter? No, no. Remind us, Ashley, your first conference was, was in 2019. Clara, I think you just joined the, the, the Teen Advisory Council and you, did you get involved with the NSA this year, last year? This year, yep. Have you been to a conference before that? No. So we're we're gonna come up and you know give you a big hug when we see you because everything's gonna be fine by then. Gabby, what about you? When did you find the NSA or or support groups? Um, I I didn't. I I like attended support meetings. Um, like with my chapter, and I also went to like a couple one day conferences. But my first conference was the Fort Lauderdale one with Ashley. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, there are a lot of really great summer camps for, for kids who stutter. And it's an amazing opportunity for them to just be kids with kids like them. Just like Ashley, you described going into the conference the first time. I mean, imagine that when you're in elementary school and junior high. It's an amazing experience. Um. Did any of you guys have any accommodations in elementary school? It sounds like Clara, your mom was on the lookout for you being graded like on fluency, which that's an awesome accommodation. Um, did any of you guys, and the reason this is why I ask, some, some kids you know, do not wanna give presentations in front of their class because they're afraid they're gonna stutter or it's really difficult for them. And then some kids want to still do it. And then some parents are concerned, should I make them do it to like make them tough? And like, if they don't do it now, you know, when they're 12, are they gonna do it when they're 18? Um, so tell us about what kind of accommodations maybe that you had when you were in grade school, middle school versus what you have now. Gabby, did you have any? I may have had accommodations. Um, I think my teachers in elementary school were aware. Um, my mom was like very, was pretty active, I think in my elementary school. Um, I think as like I went into middle school, I definitely had to advocate more from, for myself, like in terms of letting my teachers know, but I don't really remember any sort of accommodations to be honest. Okay. Yeah. Ashley? Um, I can't remember ever having accommodations um, in ele elementary school or in middle school. Um, I only, and in high school, I only mentioned it to my te teachers when it, when it applied. Um, yeah, I guess I didn't, I wish I would have like told them, but they f figured it out pretty fast. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. Clara, did you have formal accommodations? 
I did have an IEP for fluency. Um, I did get like a little bit of speech therapy in like kindergarten or first grade. I don't remember it. So that's why I didn't mention it for the earlier question. Um, I, the one time that accommodations have become a big thing for me is when I'm doing presentations in Chinese. Um, because if I sound like if I'm stuttering, it sounds like because I, I tend to block in Chinese for some reason more than re repetitions, which is what I usually do in English. Um, and so it sounds like I don't know my Chinese. And so that's something that in high school started becoming an issue for me. And that's something that I think stutterers should kind of own and like know that, you know, it's going to be hard because it might sound like, you know, you, you uh, really don't know your Spanish or you really don't know your Chinese, but you do. And it's just so it's just something to just make sure you teach your nose and so that you don't ever have to feel ashamed about it. I think that's a good point. Um, yeah, a lot of kids take foreign language in high school and I didn't even know that it was, I mean, obviously, you know, my son stutters in English, he stutters in Spanish and I just kind of thought that that's just, you know, right. Uh, but it can, for him, it was, incredibly difficult because when you're learning a brand new language, your, um, your language is limited. And he was kind of covert for a little bit in high school where he would, he would prefer to switch words when he would prefer not to stutter in front of the class. And so giving oral presentations, it really um, stretched him. Um, it ended up being a good thing. Um, he had some open conversations with his friends about it. Um, so it, it kind of, it was, it was room for growth. Um, but I, yeah, I, I think it's remarkable that, you know, you're majoring in Chinese. I mean, my goodness, that just sounds like the hardest thing ever. Um, Gabby, and it sounds like you're also majoring in languages as well. Um, so to you guys being um, multilingual and being a person who stutters, not, not mutually exclusive. It's, it sounds like is the consensus here. Okay. I think that, I think that's good. Um, Jamie wants to know, I just missed it. What do you guys want parents to know about raising children who stuttered? So this is, this can be a loaded question. So give us something good and give us something bad. Like what is, what is, what are, what are Let's things? Be kind to us. Yeah. What did your parents <laughs> do? Well, and then, you know, what are maybe some things that, and you know, when you talk about them now, you guys can laugh about and say that that didn't really go so great. At least they're all laughing right now, which is a good sign. Yeah. Right. No one looks angry. So that's helpful. <laughs> So what do you want parents to know about raising children who stutter? It's a big, it's a big, it's a big question. Ashley, what do you, what do you want us parents to know? Um, I guess to just like, my mom personally gets really defensive anytime like anyone says anything bad about my stutter, like, I'll tell her that like some lady like asked me um, if I knew my, my my name at the store that I was going to and I just brushed it off and I'll just mention to her and she's like, what? Like, I will, do you want me to, to go up there and like talk to them? Like, I, I'm like, no, mom, it's okay. Like, it's fine. Um, so I feel like not to be so defensive about it, like as your kids get older, like um, I know I stutter. I can defend from. I can de de defend myself. Um, yeah, but something that my mom did well. Come back to me on that one. I'll think about it. I'll think about it. You think of a good one, um, Clara. Um, I think uh, I would want. Um, I think parents to know that. I think kids especially um, feel very vulnerable about 
their stutter and how that relates to the environments they're in. And I think at least for me personally, I wasn't willing to convey that. So even though I never directly said to my parents, you know, you are my absolute safe space. You can never like have a negative reaction to my stutter or, you know, mm -hmm. and I think I never directly mentioned that, but I think that in itself was super important that I could stutter. Um, for some reason, I tend to stutter when I'm like telling a story, like when I'm telling a past story. And so oftentimes it's often when I'm at my house or with my friends. So I tend to stutter a lot more in my house and off, but at my parents just, you know, don't, you know, never rush me, never. And that I think to me was the most important because it allowed me to get more comfortable with my speech. Um, something that I wish um, maybe had done differently is that I wish I was more connected um, because my mom does not stutter and my dad did, but feels very ashamed of his stutter. So it was very, um, I never really, and my grandpa stutters is also very ashamed of his stutter. So I never had a community um, of stutters and I wish my parents had, there's not a local chapter of the NSA in my area, but I wish I had been connected to the NSA when I was younger. So Jerry, mm -hmm. Jerry doing a good thing by doing this, but I think that community was something that I lacked. I think that would have been really important for me to be connected to. And when you're a young child, you can't get that for yourself. So that's something that's a good parent role to take on. Yeah, you didn't even know what you were missing, right? But I think what you said um, before was really profound that they were your spa safe space and you were allowed to talk however you talked and nobody rushed you and no one commented on it. And I, I think that's really profound. Gabby, what advice do you have for us parents? Um, one thing that I I did like note, I do notice about at least my mom um, is that I think I didn't really talk about my stutter like in middle school, even early high school, even though it was something that I dealt with every day and like really built up. And I obviously was like very anxious and insecure about it. But I think my mom was, my mom mistook me not wanting to talk about it for it not being an issue. Um, and so that's something. And so finally, like, you know, when I, you know, talked, um, talked about it with her, I don't think she understood that, um, like me not talking about it didn't mean that it wasn't an issue. Um, so when I was like in high school, I finally like vocalized that I really wanted to go back to speech therapy because that was like the only thing that I could see as like a, a tangible solution um so that 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 is one thing and then I also feel like another thing is even like with both of my parents is um both of them sort of struggle to understand that like there isn't really a cure to stuttering and that I like both of my parents I think are very like goal oriented where um like going to speech therapy meant techniques to learn to not stutter anymore even though my speech therapist was not like that at all and was like very positive you know was was very much about like positive thinking and it's okay to stutter and you need to advertise um and so I think that was really difficult for them to understand um which they still don't really completely understand I think right um but yeah yeah. Did they come with you to the conference in 2019? Yeah, my mom did, yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I think that um, Denise is nodding her head. I think a lot of parents go through that, and a lot of people who don't stutter don't know enough about stuttering to know that there's not a cure. So the expectation that you're going to learn something and do it over and over and over and over and over again, and then we're never going to hear a stutter is not realistic. Um, you know, you, you brought up something that I think is interesting. You, the lack of the conversation about it. So I think that's, you know, that can be something that happens to a lot of, of parents, especially with like middle schoolers or young high schoolers and how sometimes I remember feeling like, well, I wonder how he feels about it. Does, does this bother him? Does it not bother him? If I bring it up, is it going to, is it, is he going to think that it should bother him just because I'm talking about it? Um, is it, so this is my question. Is it okay, you know, for your parents to talk to you about Hey, Gabby, you know, how do you feel about your stutter? Um, does it bother you? You know, I remember wondering, like, you know, is, is anybody teasing? Like, what are your friends to say? Is that okay to ask is my question. Yeah, no, this is something I think it's like a, a balance, obviously. And um, yeah, I think it's a balance. And I know that like, 
I didn't experience someone like asking me about my stutter a lot. So I'm sure I probably would have gotten like slightly annoyed <laughs> if that had happened. But yeah, I think it's also balance and also just like letting, um, and I, I also can't, like, obviously I'm not a parent, so I can't really imagine like being a parent. And I know like a lot of the advice, especially with like young children is like, don't mention the stutter because then they'll become conscious of it and then it'll become worse. And um, so I, I obviously think it's a balance and I don't really have an answer to be honest um I do wish that my like mom or my dad had like asked me about my stutter more or maybe like made it more of like a you know like a comfortable thing to talk about but it yeah it's a balance yeah I just wanted to interject because well anyone who's heard me speak at the NSA knows that we went in 2015 or 2016 whatever it was when my daughter was eight I went with the sole purpose of figuring out what the cure was and how we were going to fix her stutter. I'm not proud of it. I've spoken publicly in front of everyone about it. It is what it is. And I learned real fast, probably in my second session on my first day that not only was I so wrong, I was doing everything wrong as it related to handling the situation, how I was not treating my daughter. Of course, I was treating her well, but just like okay, well, you're learning these techniques and now we got to fix it and we got to do it, we got to do it. And once I realized the trajectory of where our life was headed with her and I knew that I had to just accept what, was, what, what, what it was, that she was a person who stutters and this was going to be with her and that she would have moments of fluency and moments of being more stuttery as we call it and that all I really needed to do was just support her and be there for her um, helped take out some of the tension from the household. Now we just deal with actual like teenage drama having nothing to do with her stutter. But I, I learned that so much of what the anxiety that was created in the household really was for me because I, I couldn't control this. This was so far out of my ability to you know be in control. And so for the parents on here who might have younger kids and who were thinking, well, okay, great, you know, let's just figure out the cure and let's get this fixed and how do I nip it in the bud and early intervention is key and all that kind of stuff. The reality is that, you know, if by age five, if your child is someone who stutters, the likelihood that that is going to continue is, is you know, is pretty, pretty apparent. But, you know, these three ladies have shown us that they, not without challenges of just daily life, but they are amazing. They're confident. They've survived middle school. They survived high school. They have friends. You know, I actually want to know, like, and this is not a real question, the confidence that you have now, like, when did that come about? I mean, it just, I don't think you realize, and I think many of the parents can sit here and say, like, my goodness, I want some of what you have. I want to feel that confident in my own skin. I want to know that you know, I have a supported, like, regardless of, you know, what people are saying around me, you know, I'm confident in my skin, I've accepted my stutter, I advocate for myself, you know, all of those things. It's, it's truly, truly empowering. Um, sorry. Also, if you know me, you know, I like to go off on tangents sometimes because I just get really emotional around this topic because I know that, um, you know, it's part of our household every single day. Well, and, and I think Denise, you bring up you bring up um, a question with that. You guys have all touched on moments when you 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 wanted like you you weren't pleased with the stutter. You know, you wanted you didn't want to talk about it. You wanted to be done with it. Um, I'm sure, just like every person, you have days where maybe some of that creeps back in. But did you have a turning point that you can remember? or maybe a time in your life where it kind of started clicking towards the other way, where it wasn't, you know, the worst, you know, now it's something that you, I mean, you've obviously taken this um, and you volunteer with the NSA. So to me, that means you're, you're using your stutter now for something good. So I'm wondering, did you have a, a turning point with your thoughts to your stutter? Clara? 
Um, I briefly touched on this earlier, but kind of emphasizing the, like this point, I think um, for me when I, so kind of, yeah, after I realized that, you know, stuttering presents its own set of challenges, lots are often some, uh, kind of in parallel to like teenager challenges and middle schooler challenges, but mm -hmm. the experience I get from living with the stutter and that's inevitable. And that kind of experience of learning how to talk to people because talking to people when you have a stutter is really scary that that made everything else and challenges in my life easier. I think from there, I kind of was like, okay, great. And that was when, you know, it was middle school and middle school was such a stressful time. Like everything mm -hmm. was, things were going. Um, so I think my stutter just came part of me. And then I think I was internally somewhat proud of it and that I was proud that it kind of gave me the strength from becoming a quiet kid as a result of bullying, but as someone who was able to um, kind of conquer past that, I didn't become, I would say, fully proud of my stuttering in terms of being something that's a part of me that doesn't hinder me, but that helps me, but that, and just getting stuttering pride when I realized that I was able to connect with others that have different backgrounds from mine, and that um, stuttering while I have them while it's my stuttering's mild and while it's in invisible, it's a big part of my identity and that, that allowed me to connect with others. And for me personally, that's something that I really value. So I think it wasn't until high school that I could say, I am proud of it, but I was a, it was a gradual transition. I think that that's my point of the story is that it was a gradual, it was early middle school, yeah. early high school. Okay. Ashley, what about you? Um, I agree with Clara. It was super gradual for me too. Um, I would say the biggest turning point would be when, like, the first time I told one of my friends that I stuttered, um, it was like a newer friend, too, so I, they never, like, really heard me talk before, and I told them, and they were like, oh, okay, cool. I don't really know what I was expecting. I guess like the world didn't explode. So I was like, I can do this. Like they, they said, okay. Like I was, okay. I don't, I didn't know what I was expecting, but they were like, okay, cool. I was like, I can, like, I can do this. Like this, this may work. Mm -hmm. um, and then I just did that to everybody. And then they were like, okay, cool. And then I feel like with each, it's gradual, like, like Clara said, um, each time just build you up a little bit more and more each day. Okay. Gabby, was there a turning point for you with um, your feelings on your stutter? Um, yeah, I definitely feel like, um, like finding the NSA right before I, I, right before I came to college, was like really um it really I mean I, I guess it was a turning point because I because I feel like when I came to college at least I was a lot more open about my stutter and I was a lot more willing to post about it on my social media so even if I don't communicate it exactly to my um like friends I know they know about it um via social media and that was something that I really struggled with in high school just because I like in retrospect I think it's kind of not dumb on my part but just sort of naive because obviously I stutter like I think like I know they could like they could tell so but I think me putting words to it was like you know different and so um yeah I, I think coming to college and finding the NSA and also just seeing like a lot of the people in the TAC who have been active in the NSA community for a long time um do seem a lot more vocal about their stutter and that was um you know like seeing other people do it too really made me want to do it yeah well we really appreciate you guys we have we have time for a few more questions um you guys want to talk about jobs or dating Ooh, hot button topics um 
How do you guys deal with job interviews? I mean, let's talk about maybe pre-COVID, but before everything was like this. You touched on on having a Skype or phone interviews. Do you disclose to a, a potential employer, or maybe if you haven't looked for a job, like if you had a college interview, do you disclose that at the time of meeting somebody like that? Are you guys all thinking? Um, yeah, I could talk about this. Um, I, to be honest, haven't really disclosed it. I have had a lot of interviews for jobs or internships and something, a question that is now asked a lot is about like the diversity and inclusion efforts. And so something that I always mention at least just also like if I've been stuttering or if I, or maybe if it's like a question at the beginning is I will talk about like being a member of the stuttering community and how that's sort of like a unique perspective that I can bring to a job or an internship. Um, and so that really helps me like take the pressure off the rest of the interview. And also I think it's, it's um, maybe unique that I'm like able to talk about it in like a very casual way, but also sort of frame it in a positive light. And so I think it's something that and maybe it's an advantage and also it like helps me too yeah yeah totally I mean what great advice um yeah you you mention it casually um you open it up where you're comfortable if they want to ask you a question um yeah I just love that I think that you frame that so perfectly I think that um that's awesome advice do you guys um so I asked, when I did this with Caden and Matt, I asked them this too, and they just laughed and laughed and thought it was so funny. Do you guys feel like having a stutter has inhibited, like, does it make you nervous to go on a date with somebody? Or is it just like one other thing? Like, I can't imagine that you guys are going on a lot of blind dates. So do the people already know that you stutter? Is it a non-issue? Gabby, you look like you're... <laughs> okay, yeah, I could talk about this. So I um, have gone on some dates and I have never talked about my stutter. I wish I had um, because it really like ca does cause a lot of stress and anxiety like before. Even if I'm friends with a person, it still causes stress and anxiety. And I have been like set up by a couple of my friends. And yeah, I... I don't have advice because I don't think I'm like really good at dealing with this, to be honest. Um, but yeah, it causes me a lot of stress. And just because for me, at least something that I struggle with is I don't want to like have to communicate it to someone and like make it a big deal. And then them like feel like I'm like sharing something, even if it's like a first date. So that's like what I've sort of struggled with. Yeah. Right. I think I asked my son that and he's like, they're, they're going to figure it out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it seems to have worked, worked for him. Um, before we go tonight, and I kind of told you guys that I would ask this, what do you guys want, you know, what would you want the world to know about stuttering? Anything? Clara? Um, I think I would want to know, um, tell the world that stuttering, you know, comes in all shapes and sizes, well, people who stutter come in all shapes and sizes, and that it's not, um, you know, stuttering in one person is going to look very different in another person, and that mm -hmm. on a related note, that disability is, is such a taboo topic, so I think I'd want the world to know that disability is not a taboo topic, and I think that um, disability pride I'm involved in a disability group at my school and disability pride has been a really interesting thing. And I think that um, stuttering is a very unique situation where, you know, we can have pride and we also can't. And I think that it's something that um, needs to, one, be, there needs to be more pride, but I think that um, just people need, that stuttering, you know, it really can be a superpower. And I think it is, that's personally helped me become who I am. But I think that, um, yeah, that was, that was jumbled, but uh, you know, just kind of this that's idea perfect. that, yeah. I think it was, I think it was just right, Clara. Ashley, what do you want the world to know about stuttering? Um, I guess I would just say to not like pass over someone who's, who, who stutters for like any reason for like anything at all. Um, yes. 
in terms of like friendships, jobs, just talking in general to people at all. Like, yeah, because that I feel like that's like a subconscious thing that we would do sometimes, but to be more like co cognizant of it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Gabby. Um, yeah, I agree with what everyone has said. I also just think even in addition to stuttering, like with other speech impediments or even just like being, having like, like, you know, being shy, um, just sort of like, um, like reframing, like you don't have to be fluent all the time to effectively communicate. So even if you don't stutter, like if, you know, if I, I know, I, I, ha I know people, or I know friends who like will stutter on one word and I know they don't have a stutter, but then they'll think that like made them not an effective communicator. So I think just sort of like reframing that. Um, so, and like, so you don't always have to talk like really quickly to, to be a good arguer um, and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, I think that I think that that that's a good point. It's oh my phone's ringing. Sorry, it's funny. Um, yeah, I read I read a book where part of what the the woman did over the course of a year was you know do all of these things and give all of these speeches. And she would finish the speech and she would say, "Oh yeah, I, I didn't do this. And I didn't do this, and I I didn't stutter, so the speech was good." And I. They'll talk about Ashley like you think your mom's crazy. I Googled this author and I sent her an, an email that was really nice. And I said, I don't know if you're a person who stutters. And if you are, fine. But if you're not, just because you stutter when you're giving a speech does not mean you did a bad job. Like stuttering in a speech does not mean you didn't do a good job. Like when you stutter, it doesn't, doesn't mean anything except for you stuttered. So that's what I want. Um, that's what I want the world to know that um, however you speak is exactly how I want to hear it. And I want that to become normal um, mm -hmm. for, for listeners. I want the listeners to, to get on the same page. Denise, um, what about you? What do you want the world to know about stuttering? Um, Goodness. I mean, I, I think, you know, a little bit of what everybody said too. I just, I think that, you know, given even the circumstance of the past year, like life is hard enough and that we all need to take a step back and just be a little bit more patient, a little bit more kind, a little bit more understanding myself included. I am always learning and growing and evolving, but, you know, seeing my child grow up like through my lens and through her lens you know, I just, I see what her being a person who stutters has, has taught her and taught all of us just about being more compassionate to others. And she's such a compassionate person innately and also because of her stutter. And I just, you know, for her, I wish that she realized all of the gifts that she has to offer this world and didn't focus just on stuttering. And I wish that everybody else out there also recognize just the gifts in people and who they are as people and not because of their stutter or in spite of their stutter. Um, my daughter was recently bat mitzvahed, we are Jewish, and she got up there and chanted her whole Torah. Um, Hebrew, like Chinese is like letter, it's like backwards, it's literally backwards and it's letters. But anyway, um, a few people commented that she did they were so impressed with what a good job she did, you know, because of her stutter. And I was like, no, she did a great job. And it, like, it just, and it didn't, so that, you know, that connection for people, one of those people is in my family. I'm just going to put it out there for everybody. But anyway, just that we all just acceptance, just overall acceptance for who someone is. That's it, plain and simple. We all want to be loved and accepted for who we are. Well, I want to thank you, Denise, for joining us tonight. Ashley, Clara, Gabby, you guys have taken time out of your evening. I know you're busy. I truly, truly appreciate it. I can't wait until we can see each other in person and that you guys can get the standing ovation that you deserve. Um, mm -hmm. I applaud you guys. Um, thank you guys so much. And all of you guys for joining us tonight. Thank you. I appreciate it. Have a good night, everybody.
Good night, everyone. Bye.